Tyros, meaning television and infrared observation satellite, is more than just a dream. This experimental weather satellite means that man's vision is no longer limited to looking up at the clouds gathering above him. In its gantry at Cape Canaveral, Florida, a Thorable rocket is ready to carry this weather observation satellite on a new space adventure called Tyros-1 for television and infrared observation satellite. It contains the most complete collection of instruments ever assembled to study the use of space vehicles for comprehensive weather observation. The most important of these being two Viticon cameras, one armed with a wide angle lens of vast scope, the other with a standard narrow range lens. Both record on this magnetic tape machine and on command send their scannings back to Earth. The historic launching of the Thor Abel carrying the Tyros-1 in its bulbous nose takes place at 6.40 a.m., a peacetime use of a deadly war missile that promises humanity a new era in meteorology. Graphic animation supplied by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration shows how the last stage of the rocket shot the satellite into orbit. A circular path over the Earth, 50 degrees north to 50 degrees south, between 400 and 450 miles out in space. A flying ladies' hat box that circles the globe every 90 minutes, during which every two seconds, the wide-angle lens scans 800 square miles. Recordings it's directed to send back to this receiving station at Fort Monmouth, New Jersey. Another space triumph for the U.S., which is explained to Ike at the White House by space agency head Glennon, who produces a picture sequence of the satellite scannings. My name is Thomas B. Abrazzini. In 1959, I went in the Army uh, for a two-year stint, and I wanted to go in for three years to do photography, <clears throat> and uh, which is... Uh, I knew the MOS, uh, and um, you go in for three years, and uh, I got out of uh, college June 15th, uh, 1959, and two year, months later I get a, a, a letter from President Eisenhower, you're in the Army now. Hmm. So <clears throat> I was shipped to Fort Dix, and I made out papers, you know, and there's hobbies, and I put down photography, photography. I went down to Fort Benning. Did the, did the same thing for the basic training, and after bas basic uh, after uh, basic training, <clears throat> I was shipped from uh, uh, Fort uh, Fort Benning to uh, Fort Monmouth, New Jersey, where I I had gotten the MOS for ph photography with two other people. I was very very lucky. I mean, lucky is not the word. And I went to school <clears throat> at Fort Monmouth for ten weeks for photography. I did eight weeks black and white, or the teacher did, and uh, two weeks was, the last two weeks was color, and I got very interested. There was 20 people in the class, and some were pe sent to Hawaii, some were sent to uh, France, and some, I wanted to go to the Army Pictorial Center in New York City, because my father was in very bad condition. He was dying, he had a liquor store, I was coming in every day, 55 miles uh, uh, to, from uh, Fort Monmouth to, to uh, New York, and I had to get back the same day, uh, this, uh, this, the ne next day at uh, quarter to five in the morning, to say all president counter for sir. I did that for, I put twenty seven thousand miles on a little Ford Falcon, and anyway, to make a long story short, <clears throat> uh, after uh, I was uh, the twenty people, instead of going uh, me going to the Army Pictorial Center, I was sent to another place on Fort Monmouth, which, call, which was called the Hexagon, very much like the Pentagon. It was, it was a secret place. Yeah, I, I never had to have a secret clearance to get in, and I developed pictures for two years. So anyway, April 1st, 1960, uh, a colonel came into my dark room, because I was developing pictures all the time. Uh, he gave me four negatives. There were four by five uh, in size, uh, which at that time was the... Uh, the uh, professional camera's uh, uh, size, which was the speed graphic that everybody 
used as newspapers and whatever and and you know it was a talk uh, I could go into the whole story about grain but I'm not going to uh, and um, anyway he gave me four photographs and he said make a hundred eight by tens of each so I had I had uh, you know the developer the uh, the the shortstop um, uh, the water and the shortstop to do all pictures. They were rockers, and you know, I, I, I had my own darkroom at home. And uh, anyway, to make a long story short, I put the I, I, de I de was developing the first picture, and what came up? What came up? Florida. Yes, Florida, right here. You see it? See? It's upside down, but there's Florida. See it? Camera, etc., etc. And I was surprised because we were, we were developing pictures of what an artist's conception of uh, what the world would look from outer space. space. And this was a real thing. I said, oh, this is, has to be real. Then I developed the next picture, which, which was the, uh, uh, the Red Sea, right? Okay, with uh, Cairo and, uh, and the uh, Nile River, etc., etc. And I said, holy cow. And the third, pers third, third picture and the fourth picture was 108 by 10s. Of each, that was 408 by tens. Colonel came in to the to my darkroom and said, "Mr. Abrazzini, private first class Abrazzini, you developed the first pictures taken from outer space." I said, "Yeah, I know they look pretty real to me." Yeah, we're going to send them the price in the Eisenhower tonight. They'll be in the papers tonight, and they were on the paper. What happened was uh, these pictures, the uh, Florida, for example. If you go to Tyros uh, on the uh, uh, computer, you'll see that uh, they don't say that the first picture was Florida, okay? Uh, but that's the one I developed, okay? And they don't even have the the Florida picture in. This is Florida, you can see. And uh, anyway, to make a long story short, what happened was, um, um, these are the pictures here. You can see it says, Tyros looks at the eastern seacoast of the United States. And you see Florida, see it? And, but uh, it's not in the, uh, in, the, in the computer. And then there's Tyros looks at the Middle East, you see, the, the Nile River and, and whatever. And there's, there's a picture I developed, for example. And uh, there's a picture I developed, too. But there were four pictures. So this is, this is actually the original picture, right, that I took from uh, the hexagon, okay? And let's just for the heck of it look at the other pictures. There's a picture of, uh, I believe this is uh, the St. Lawrence uh, uh, River. And, uh, and there's, you can see right here, camera and whatever. That's the original um, uh, Suez Canal and the, uh, the Nile River. This was the Tyros uh, that was sent into orbit, Philco. I got another picture of it. Another one here. And this is, a, they don't show this picture like this. They show a picture like this, not from, the, not from an air view. This is the hexagon. As I said, it was a secret uh, place. Nobody really it was supposed to know. Anybody who worked in that place, you had to get a secret clearance. So that's, the, uh, that's the hexagon. And there's another picture. And this is the satellite that went up. And this is our, our dear dar, uh, our, uh, president that got the pictures. And then the uh, pictures. This is from the uh, uh, this is from uh, the computer, and it shows the four pictures that I developed. Okay, that was sent to President Eisenhower, and uh, this is actually from, as I said, and this is the New York Times the next day, April second, nineteen sixty. U.S. orbits weather satellite. It televises Earth and clouds. New era in. Uh, and you know what, okay? Two cameras used, and 270 pounds, etc., etc. It's pretty damn interesting, I think. What do you think? And that's about it, I would say.